Welcome to this service of Christian worship. The Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church family welcomes you and invites you to worship with us. The communion of saints is that collection of folks who belong to God. And as the Apostles Creed states, we believe in that. We're part of it. And that communion of saints is not constrained by physical distance or temporal displacement. We are united with persons of faith from every time, place, age, and nation. We are one in the spirit, thanks to the grace of God. So let us prepare our hearts now to come before the Lord in worship using this prayer, which is over 1,700 years old. It comes from Augustine. Grant me, even me, my dearest Lord, to know you, to love you, and to rejoice in you. Amen. Join me now in our call to worship. If you have downloaded our worship order, you may say these uh, sentences responsively with me. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Peace be with you. Jesus stands among us. Peace be with you. The risen Lord is here. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It is sung by Laney Rogers and played by Trey Rogers. Oh 
Jesus invites us to confess our sins, trusting in the gracious mercy of God with these words. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Let us trust in Christ's love for us, in his way, and in God's mercy. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Dear Lord, you call us to proclaim your Easter victory with new lives that are filled with faith and hearts that brim with love. We confess, O oh God, that we remain captive to our doubts and fears. We remain preoccupied with our self-comfort and apathetic toward the suffering of others. We threaten the life of your creation by our endless desire for more. Saving God, have mercy on us and forgive us. Save us from ourselves. Save us for yourself. Increase our faith and embolden us in love to serve your Easter kingdom of love, justice, and peace. Amen. Let us now add our personal prayers of confession now in silence. Amen. Receive now the declaration of pardon. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, as your word is proclaimed, send your Holy Spirit to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from John's gospel, chapter 20, verse 19 through 31. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them saying, peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Having said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, wasn't with them when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them saying, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. 
Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written here. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My second grade art teacher taught me a great lesson. Having messed up my drawing, I raised my hand. I wanted another sheet of paper. But she refused, saying, you can make something out of this. I protested. She insisted. She wasn't being stingy with supplies. She was teaching me a wonderful truth. You can turn something that's messed up into something that's beautiful. Jesus certainly did that with Thomas. Jesus repaired a shattered faith. Jesus turned something broken into something beautiful. Transforming brokenness into beauty. There's a whole art form devoted to that. It's called kintsuge. In Japanese, it means to join with gold. Kintsuge potters take broken vessels and they reassemble them. But the damage isn't disguised. Instead, ceramic lacquer is mixed with the finest of gold to glue the pieces back together. When finished, the fault lines shine. The vessel is again in one piece, brightly veined with gold. Kintsuge recognizes that brokenness is not a defect, but the means by which deeper beauty can emerge. I think Jesus is a Kintsuge master. In repairing Thomas's broken belief, Jesus doesn't take away Thomas's pain. Jesus joins Thomas's pain to his mercy. The past is not erased, but rather it is joined to a future which can be different because healing can happen. That's what Easter is. That's what Jesus is offering us right now. We're all broken people. We've all made horrible mistakes. We've all badly hurt others. Our three steps forward and two steps back lives are stained and imperfect. Our failure, shame, and despair are compounded by our culture, which values youth, newness, success, perfection. If we're not so new, if we've endured setbacks, if we've accumulated more than our share of scars, we often feel like broken China, irreparably damaged, and destined for the trash. But Jesus does not see us that way. Yes, Jesus sees our scars. He sees our scars because he has scars too. The risen Christ has the mark of the nail and spear in his hands and side. Those are still part of him, but the resurrection has made him whole, scars and all. And that's what the resurrection is still doing today. Our risen Savior lives to love us back into life. He takes our broken lives and fills the cracks with his healing love, which is the golden glue that binds us together. Because of Jesus' Easter victory, we can trust that his love shall heal us. We can trust that his love will prevail. But what about now? COVID-19 has separated us. It's shattered the status quo. Like Thomas, we are left in despair. 
But that's where Jesus meets us. That's where resurrection happens. When imperfect, struggling souls open their hearts to Christ, asking to be forgiven, asking to be healed, asking to be loved, God meets us in that moment. Our brokenness is where Easter happens today. If you feel both broken and loved, then you see yourself as God does. But God doesn't despise your brokenness because that is precisely where your best self, your deepest strength, and your life's truest beauty can arise. The Catholic writer Tilliard de Chardin said, trust in the slow work of God. I love that. Trust in the slow work of God. God's healing takes time. Fresh, painful wounds don't disappear overnight. But healing does come. Trust that. Live into that. Cooperate with that. Give the broken pieces of your life to Christ. He will make them beautiful. He will make you whole. Christ will love you back into life. He will bind up your brokenness unto a brilliant resurrection. Let us pray to our resurrecting God in this doubting world saying, keep us in faith that we may have life. O oh God, we pray for the church universal. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that we may honor and pass on the great inheritance we have received. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for our earth, your creation, that we may care for its beauty, conserve its resources, and preserve its bounty and beauty for future generations. Keep us in faith that we may live. We pray for the whole world, its nations, its leaders, and its people, that your wisdom and peace may prevail, and that you may lead us through this time of anxiety, illness, and pandemic into a new day of hope, health, and life. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for all those in need, the suffering, the oppressed, the ill, the dying, and all those who care for them. Keep us in faith that we may have life. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Keep us in faith that we may have life. O oh God, we ask your blessing upon those persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. Saving God, unite us now in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide, will be sung by Jenny Fights Swift. This joyful Easter tide, obey with sin and sorrow, my love the crucified has sprung to life this morrow, had Christ who once was slain not burst his three-day 
trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ who once was slain not burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the Christ who once was slain, not burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now has Christ arisen, 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 arisen. Receive the charge and benediction. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Uphold the weak. Strengthen those who suffer. Bless those who are in times of crisis and need and want. Love and serve God. Care for creation and neighbor. And live as God's Easter people. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Happy Easter, Oconee Presbyterian Church community and friends. This is a weird time for us, but we could not do Easter Sunday service without our Alleluia Chorus. This is kind of a special thing. Everyone you see in this video is actually doing their part at their own home in quarantine. And so they sent me all these videos. I took them, mashed them into one did some sound editing and some video editing, and this is what we have. Uh, not only do, I, do we have our church members, but we also have friends from the community, and even some friends of mine from the opera world. Uh, my best friend Pablo sent me his video all the way from Paris, France. So enjoy this, happy Easter, and we love you all, and can't wait to see you in person.
Allah. 